Um, so, you know, the only, I guess the only downside was I lost five toenails as part of the <laughs> run, uh, but I pulled up okay after it. But that's pretty common in marathons and, and uh, Alison and Rob, of course, both of you are, uh, are career, I won't say career, but regular marathoners. So, Allison, you just finished the New York Marathon. How'd that go for you? I did. Well, I did the New York Marathon, and then I did the Singapore Marathon. Yeah. That was a bit hotter. <laughs> yeah. New York was so awesome. You run through all the boroughs, and there's people lining the streets, and the weather was great. It was wonderful. Singapore was really hot. Yeah. And no people on the streets. It was the night, it was the night, the night but one. But that right? was great. Because yeah. I've done it several times during the day, and it's just so hot. I, Natalie, I don't know how you did 100K in the, in the daytime. It was yeah, so hot. Yeah, that's but tough. It was but it was fun, you know, and you, it was a, um, but I like the New York. Yeah, and Rob, what, do you, what have you been doing lately? Any, any big runs for you or any big events? I'm preparing for the North Pole Marathon, wow. which will be in April, It'll actually be around Easter. So last year we went up to try to do the North Pole and logistics got in the way and we weren't able to do it. So instead we did something called the 78 degree um, mm. Long Urban uh, Marathon. And so, uh, so I've got to train both to be in marathon condition, but be ready for the freezing cold weather. Now, I remember last year, because we've known each other for a while, I remember last year when you were getting ready for the, the polar marathon, sorry, earlier this year, you actually trained in Singapore in the back of a refrigerated truck. It was crazy. Which, the video of that was just amazing. <laughs> the, the other thing that I did, too, is I had the opportunity to be in one of those uh, hyperbolic chambers, you know, the, the, yeah. the ones where they'll freeze you. And in order to really train, you do that in as little clothing as possible. So people thought I was pretty crazy in my booties, my my uh, shorts, and, and gloves. Oh, man. <laughs> so are you going to be doing that? Are you going to be repeating that again this year? Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to figure out what the exact training regimen will be this year, but something pretty crazy. Something with hot chocolate at the end of it, I know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, all three of you are, um, are not only executives, entrepreneurs, uh, and very busy in your world, but you are all very dedicated to exercise, and specifically running triathlons and that kind of exercise. Why is that? Let's start with the general question. Why is that important to you to have that exercise regime? regime? What does it give to you on a, let's say, daily, weekly, monthly basis? Allison, let's start with you. Well, I, to me, it's not an exercise regime. I, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'll be the first to say I really don't like exercise. But I love being in races, and yeah. I love training, mm -hmm. and I love that experience. And so I feel that when I'm doing that, that it makes me a better leader. It makes me a better wife. I just feel like I'm a better person when I am fit. Is it the endorphins that you get flowing through you or the... The time of day you go up and you know run early in the morning or what or ride or what what is it is there something you can narrow down that that you feel makes you better well i think that um there's the well m for me the last few years mostly i've done triathlons mm -hmm. and so i find that there's a big learning component to that so it's it's just challenging me i love that um so i feel that that helps me get perspective um so for me the benefits are Psychological benefits, I think, are really great. Yeah. How about you, Rob? You have a you are on the road a lot around the region, and it, it must be a challenge to keep up that regime. But why is it so important to you to to do that? Yeah, I think I'm very similar to the way Allison just described, which is that a I just love to experience things. I'm an experienced junkie, I think I would say, and um, and so you can experience things like a marathon on different continents or participating in crazy races. I've competed in the world's toughest mudder, um, a 24-hour endurance race on three occasions. Wow. Um, needed surgery after it twice. <laughs> and you know, the, the, uh, the way I- And yet you went back for more. Yeah, well, my, my wife did think it was pretty crazy. I was gonna I, say, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but the third time was a charm, by the way. No, no surgery after the third time. Yeah, yeah, but, but basically, the way I think about it is, you have to um, you have to have something that you have a goal for. It's, it's like in business. You, you don't go through a year with no business plan. You don't have no you don't have a business that's run with no targets. And so you have some sort of a goal. And the goals I typically set are around: I sign up for a race on some crazy location <laughs> for something that will be fun. Tie it into something that will be enjoyable in my life. And then it's self motivating to be ready for that race. Yeah, with Rob Scheimek. 
Allison Eyring and Natalie Dow in the studio talking about executives literally on the run, but not because they did something wrong, uh, just because they want to uh, get out and experience life in a different way. And Natalie, you're, uh, of course, a fit fitness entrepreneur. You do a lot of coaching in addition to being a professional uh, athlete yourself. What, when you're training and working with high-performing executives, what stands out to you about why they're driven to do crazy, uh, crazy events in crazy places or marathons back to back or whatever it is they do? Yeah, I think, you know, there's a couple of things. Number one, it's a stress relief for them. So it's, it's a way of dealing with their work stresses and they're out. And, you know, I know personally I'm a nicer person when I exercise. Um, I also think people, the older you get, like structure. So people like to follow a structured training program. They like to be able to measure their results against that program. Um, a lot of um, execs are obviously high performers and high achievers, so they will seek out a coach to get the best results for themselves mm -hmm. so they don't mm -hmm. want to waste time. Um, you know, and I think like Rob said, they want an experience, a bit of grit is good. You know, they're in their day-to-day -day job, maybe sitting behind a desk and they, they want something a bit more exciting. Just to shake it up a little that. bit. Yeah, 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 test themselves in a different way, which, you know, is a physical way. Yeah. Natalie, have you seen any kind of a, a shift in mindsets in, let's say, the last three, five, whatever, however many years you'd like to go back? Um, with more executives taking on more of these challenges, is there is it kind of a newer generation of thinking? We think of the Mad Men of the 1960s, you know, three three drink lunches and smoking and all that. It, it, or is the mindset different now with executives that realize they have to do this? One thousand percent. I mean, I think I I truly believe that a lot of brands are marketing to the wrong demographic. They all think their market is twenty to twenty six year olds, mm. where really it's sort of over forties who have the time, who have the money who are brand loyal um, and are willing to pay for these experiences, they're actually going out and beating the younger people competing now because they're 100% dedicated to mm. the cause. Um, and just because you're finding it later in life doesn't mean that you're not going to be good at something. So right. I think, you know, you put in the work, maybe you tried <coughs> something in your younger days at college um, and you're rediscovering something else. And I think, you know, the three of us sitting here are all probably proof of that, that you put in the work <laughs> and you do well. Yeah. And of course, medicine and technology has allowed people yeah. to, uh, you know, get that <laughs> knee replacement, that hip replacement and we'll keep going, right? Whereas it used to be the master's category yeah. was kind of a joke, you know, it was like the old people plodding along. But that's, I mean, it's a very competitive. Uh, uh, more competitive. More you look competitive. At, at triathlons now, yeah. and I think even, you know, ultra racing as well. Um, I think any endurance sport, generally, um, you're seeing a lot of older athletes do well. You know, the best ultra runners in the world are generally over 40. Yeah, interesting. Alison Irene, how do you manage uh, to, to train and to, you know, keep going with business? And how, how, do, you, how do you do that scheduling for yourself? Well, I am very structured. I have, <laughs> I put it in my calendar. I, uh, I have certain things that I do on certain days. I let everybody around me know it. Mm. Um, in my family, we almost always eat dinner together. And so we, we adjust the timing for when who's doing what sport. Sure. And so I think it's a mix of both uh, having a plan and being able to work around that, but also having flexibility. I also travel a lot in my work. and so. I also, am, I'm not so rigid, you know, I just do what I can when I can. Yeah. Uh, and I, for me personally, I'm, uh, I strive to do my best. I don't have to be the fastest, uh, but I, but I know that the longer I go, the, the better I am, but relative <laughs> to everybody else, because they're all <laughs> falling just wear aside. Them down. Wearing them out. <laughs> yeah. and, and Rob, when you look at uh, your corporate environment at FWD, do you see uh, an increasing number of, of employees in FWD being more, are, are they maybe a, a little bit inspired by, by you and the crazy stuff you're doing? I know a number of your, of your employees have done the North Pole or have committed to do the North Pole Marathon as well. Is that, is that part of the engagement process within the company? It, it is, and, and I really want it to be a way where an example gets set at the top and then people try to follow it. And, um, we're headed back to the North Pole this year. There were nine runners from FWD hmm. last year, and we'll have um, more than nine runners this year. Wow. And the number of people who demonstrated interest in what they saw as little video clips. If you get a chance, you can you can video <laughs> it. Uh, you go and Google it. It's a really interesting race. Yeah. And, uh, and so I think, look, the idea is to get everyone to think about um, 
doing things the way we had to do them in the future, not so much the way we had to do them in the past. And I agree with everything that's been said. Look, when I was younger, I was fast. I was, damn, I was fast. <laughs> <laughs> you look at me today, you laugh at that, the possibility that even I'm a hobbled old guy. How can I possibly, you know, yeah, run okay, those of you that cannot see this broadcast right now, I am not looking at a hobbled old guy across the table from me right now. Uh, but I, I appreciate your your humility. <laughs> but but and when you look at the your companies and the way you guys do business, do you find too that that makes you more open to letting other people have flexibility in their schedules for exercise or whatever other personal endeavor gets them excited? Allison, how does that fit? Well, in certainly for you? in my, in my company, we encourage people to have flexibility, anyways, and so we will have plenty of people who will leave early or come in late because they're exercising or they're doing something. Yeah. Um, actually, one of the first policies that we made, we don't have many, uh, but one of them was a reimbursement for races. Hmm. So if uh, any of our employees registers for any kind of race, we'll reimburse the cost. That's a great one. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. How about you, Rob? I, I, I love that idea, by the way. <laughs> I think I'll Time to steal copy, it. <laughs> copy that for all the good ideas you just copy and, and make them your own. Um, but, you know, I would say the exactly the same thing. The, the, the FWD brand promise, so to speak, is um, you know, really to, to get ready to live, as opposed to, I'm going to protect you from dying. It's, <laughs> hey, we want to help you, actually. We'll take care of those problems for you, help you plan for your future, help you plan for the, the protection element, but just go live and enjoy your life. And, and I think, for me, it fit really nice because um, that's what I want to do. I want to actually get out there and experience more than just, I, I work to live don't live to work. Yeah. And I think that uh, the people on our team, the more that they actually really align with what is the promise of the brand, that becomes actually the behavior that they bring to the table too. They want to live, they want to have experiences, they want to be out and about and doing things. And then I also really agree with the point that Allison said, which is, look, these days, you have to be flexible with the work arrangements. And um, working from home is very common. Working remotely is something that I think will be more of a wave of the future. Yeah. And heck, uh, you know that really makes the idea of working out at the same time um, really a, a, a big possibility. A lot easier, yeah. Uh, Natalie, as you are in the coaching coaching mode, uh, what are the sort of keys for success for a busy executive who's traveling, um, who needs to still keep in shape and still keep on their on their routine? How do they effectively do that, not just maybe when they're traveling, but also with meetings and schedules you know, in the, in the city in which they live, Singapore or wherever? Yeah, I think, like Alison said, you need to schedule it, number one. I think, you know, non-negotiable, that's in the diary. Um, you know, little tips like, you know, if you are traveling to a certain city, know if there's a running route, know what the gym is, you know, plan, because you're, if you leave it to the last minute, it's it's certainly not going to happen. So it's planning ahead, but it's also then, if something happens, not beating yourself up and being a bit kind to yourself as well, because, mm. you know, if stuff happens, it, you can't always follow your plan. Um, being mindful around things like food. So if you're not getting your exercise in, then know that you shouldn't probably be having as many calories yeah, in as well. Sure. Uh, you know, because food is the, the leader, really. Um, so I think just taking into account all of those things is, is certainly important. And I think when it comes to execs, you know, it's, it's also looking at other communities that they can join and be part of around mm. this. So I think, you know, that's a piece of exercise. And what brings people together is finding like-minded people and they don't have to be in the same industry, they don't have to be at the same level, but it's it's really being answerable to the people that you're training with or that's part of your fitness community. Yeah, okay, last question to each one of you. Fitness goal or hope for 2020? Rob Chernick. Um, I'm one race away from completing the World Championship of Marathons. I've got to get through Tokyo. And so I've got to get the Tokyo Marathon done and I want to be in, on the North Pole. I want a race where there's no land beneath me. Yeah. If, if you fall through the uh, through the ice, you're in the water. <laughs> I don't well, want to fall through the water. We'll hope you come back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alice and Irene, how about you? Uh, well, I have. Uh, I've started signing up for races, so I'm not 100% certain. Yeah. Uh, but I'll I'll probably uh, anchor my training around a half Ironman next year. Mm. That's my favorite race, and uh, and then I'll just do a lot of shorter. Uh, Olympic distance and sprint triathlons around that. I don't. I make it sound so easy. Yeah, just a few <laughs> scattered with Olympic distances. Yeah, 
Uh, well, good for you. Well, congratulations. And uh, Natalie, how about you? Are you gonna? What's your What's your big goal for another ultra? I think in March in Malaysia. Oh. So a big one this time. You're gonna win that one too, right? Uh, I don't know about that, but yeah, I'm training now. <laughs> All right, Natalie Dow, a fitness entrepreneur and ultra 100k marathon winner. Uh, Allison Iring, CEO of Organization Solutions, and Rob Scheimek, CEO of FWD. Thanks to all of you for coming on today. What a great conversation. Thanks, Greg. Will Thank you come you. back again after you uh, achieve what you're going to achieve? Obviously. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, Thanks, beautiful. Guys. Thank you. And let's uh, lead out of this segment with a song that I think fits for all three of these. A little Level 42, Something About You. Guys, thank awesome. you. Thank you. Awesome. Hey. That was fun. Thank you. Let's get some pictures. Oh, I didn't realize that.